Hey everybody, this is The Singing Chef, uh, be it from Tiny's Table, hope you guys are doing well. This is our very first uh, video from YouTube, I hope everything is well with you guys, and I look forward to sharing more things from you with you from my kitchen. Uh, today, we are going to make a dish that my wife actually found online uh, from a guy I fo have followed for years by the name of Darius Williams. Many of you may know him as Darius Cooks. He is a self-published, self I don't know if he's self-taught, but um, basically self-made uh, chef, restaurateur, um, cookbook author, mogul, guru, you name it awesome dude wish I you know was able to to meet him before he made it big but hopefully our paths will cross in the near future this is one of his recipes this is his uh, cream spinach tortellini with uh, well I think as he calls it grilled shrimp but I'm going to uh, sear them in my cast iron skillet all right so <clears throat> uh, let's get started shall we turn the camera around here uh, what I've done here is I have done what we in the culinary industry call mise en place and that is get everything in its place and so well this I can move this out of the way for now here's our shrimp this is actually two pounds of shrimp um, and it's about a tablespoon and a half of Old Bay seasoning uh, a teaspoon of garlic and a couple of squirts of oil and I mix it around just letting it sit for a little bit this is two cups of half and half all right I may need a little more milk later I have some in the fridge if I need it all right um, over here what I have is some I have a half a teaspoon of, of kosher salt half a teaspoon of coarse ground black pepper half a teaspoon of roasted garlic powder I have a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg that's an interesting seasoning there and you'll get to find out more about that later I have a pinch of crushed red pepper flakes all right uh, here I have about um, about a cup and a half of Parmesan cheese I have about three quarters of a cup of smoked Gouda and I have four ounces which is half a bar of um, softened cream cheese okay here I have one pound of frozen leaf spinach all right just let it thaw and be all right here I have a pound and a half of tortellini that I just blanched in hot water um, salted hot water boil it till it started to um, get fork tender all right now in the in the pan here I have and I'm going to take my whisk here in the pan here I have half a stick of butter and about three tablespoons of flour all right and this is kind of one of the basic elements of kitcheting <laughs> and what I'm basically doing here is I'm making a roux it's a little thicker than I imagined so what I can do here is give a couple of squirts of oil there we go and that will loosen it up I'll readjust my flame here okay and what we want it to do is we want it to cook a bit get that white off the flour you know all right so we'll let it cook a minute all right so yeah we'll let that cook a minute all right. so all you're gonna need is a, um, I use two pounds of shrimp because we like shrimp in our house. Uh, the recipe really only calls for one pound, a tablespoon of uh, Old Bay. Um, the garlic is my addition, and the oil. Okay, um, you need a cup of Parmesan, half a cup of smoked Gouda, the half a half a bar of cream cheese. You need those those other seasonings I mentioned earlier, the pound of spinach, and the pound of uh, tortellini all right three tablespoons of butter all right maybe 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 four tablespoons all right just to kind of play it safe and three tablespoons of flour all right so what I'm doing is I am just whisking it and you see it's kind of taking on a slightly golden color that's the flour cooking out all right I'm gonna let it cook just a little bit more okay just a little bit yeah that's looking really good all right and I am using a whisk now, this is a nonstick skillet um, and I do have my trusty cast iron skillet back here this is the lid to this pot oh, we'll use it later well this is my trusty cast iron skillet which I absolutely love good and seasoned ready for me to use okay so here's our roux nice and thick good what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the half and half here okay We'll add the half and half. 
I'm just gonna pour it all in at once. Okay. And we're gonna wait for that to come up to temperature. I'm gonna be whisking the whole way. Okay, just to break up those little bits in there. Okay. Make sure that gets good and distributed. Okay. Good, 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 good. All right. So this is my first video, so please forgive all of my mistakes. You know, if the camera angle goes a little wonky, I apologize in advance because I'm trying to cook and uh, man the camera at the same time. So if you just bear with me here, okay, while well, that's coming up to temperature, all right? And the next thing we're going to do when that gets up to temperature is we are going to uh, stir in the cream cheese. Okay. Kind of hope that comes. Oops, sorry. Hope that comes up a little quicker. Let's see. I don't want to turn it up any higher. All right. So it may take a minute, and that's fine. But we want that flour to get nice and cooked in there. Oops. I'm splashing a little bit of half and half there. Huh? It's all right. That's what my good trusty towels are for. So when I'm have a free hand here I'll be able to do that all right so while that's working I don't want to do too much now while that's working and it's starting a little bit not too much okay very nice but it's smoothed out right nicely so it just needs to come to a boil all right so that it starts to get nice and thick you probably can't see it, but well, maybe you can see it. Have a little steam coming off the top, so that's letting me know that it's starting to work. Good. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is, oh yeah, there we go. Very good. I am going to drop in my half a block of cream cheese. Okay, that's in there now. And I'm just going to kind of stir that in. Start letting that, you know, look at that. Start letting that get nice and thick in there. Mm -hmm. I generally tend to stay away from recipes with cream cheese in it because uh, I'm not a big fan of cream cheese. However, um, I do understand that it adds a certain level of uh, tart, a certain level of sass, so to speak, to your dish. Now you see how thick that is? That's nice and thick, right? We just want to whisk that in. And I may need to, yeah, I think I may need to add a little more milk. Give me one second. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. Very, very nice. Okay. I whisk that in. Uh, maybe. Let me see. Not there. Okay. Give me a second on that. Just gonna splash a little bit more milk in there to kind of loosen it just a bit because I still have some more things to add. And one thing about you know cooking is that you can kind of play around with different flavors, you can play around with different proportions because it's all about trial and error. You know, okay. Let's go. There we go. All about trial and error. Okay. Very nice. Okay, and it's okay, it looks a little lumpy. That's just the cream cheese, the, the cold milk hit the cream cheese and kind of let it lump up. But if you just give it a second, it will work out. See, see, if that, see how that came together really nicely. It just needed a minute to warm up again. Okay, very well. Okay, all right. Next thing we'll add, get that stuff out of the way. The next thing we're going to add in, I'm going to add in the Parmesan. Okay. Beautiful Parmesan cheese. Got it right from the um, Italian section at my local Acme market. <laughs> okay. Very good. And that's going to come together nicely. If you notice, I didn't use a lot, I didn't, you know, the recipe didn't call for a lot of salt because um, cheese is like 
cream cheese and Parmesan, especially Parmesan. Um, sorry, Parmigiano Reggiano uh, for all of my culinary heads. Look, look how thick that's getting. For all of my culinary heads, uh, the Parmigiano Reggiano has quite a bit, quite a bit of salt. Has a high salt content, so you don't want to um, overdo it with the salt. Okay, in that, it's just really to accentuate. The different flavors that are coming in and the smoked gouda is going in next okay i'm gonna throw that in there okay any little bits of cheese see i'm just adding them a little bit by a little bit all right there's the the smoked gouda going in okay and when that smoked gouda hits the pan and you smell that amazing aroma your soul is going to be happy <laughs> soul is going to be so so happy okay so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch from my whisk because my mixture is really thick couldn't do that again if I tried huh so I'm gonna switch from my whisk and I'm going to move to a, a silicone spatula in a second what I'm doing is I'm squeezing out my spinach getting the water out all right because I don't want a slimy uh, watery sauce Okay, as that's coming out, I'll add that in. All right, look at that. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. All right, yeah, come on out. I think I better turn my heat down. And I think I know I'd better. There we go. There we go. Turn it down there. Okay. Awesome. All right, so all of my spinach is in. There's my hands here. And if you notice, my seasonings are still on the counter. I haven't uh, added them in yet, because it's not quite time for that. All right, and let me switch over to my silicone spatula. All right, and that will help me cream the spinach. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Yeah, break up that spinach so that it's evenly distributed throughout the sauce. Look at that. Oh boy. And while that's heating, and before I throw the tortellini in, look at look at all the water that came off that spinach, yeah. Alright, while this is heating, I'm going to just move that around here. I'm going to get my cast iron working. All right, kind of medium high heat there. I'm not gonna put any oil in the pan. One, because it's already seasoned, and two, because the shrimp have oil on them already. Um, and I do want them to get a nice color. And so the, um, sorry about the camera. <laughs> yeah. Okay, all right. Look, uh, Look at that. Now, if you want, you can always add more spinach. You can always add more spinach. Um, I won't today because my spinach is in the freezer. <laughs> All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to have a, everything on a silicone uh, mat. I'm going to roll it up here so that I can put it all with one hand. And I can just pop, pow. It all goes in all at once okay all goes in all at once that way it all gets evenly distributed and stirred around oh man I wish you could smell how this smells Woo. yeah very good okay so that's working that is working Just a little bit here. Okay. Uh huh. That's working. All right, guys, I'm back. Had to put the phone down to readjust some things. I actually went ahead and, and um, put some more spinach in. See, look at that. Doesn't that look great? <laughs> yeah. All right. 
So that looks more like cream spinach. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna let it cook for a little bit. Okay, let that rest for a couple minutes there. Ooh, oh God, I wish you could taste that. I'm gonna cover it over. All right, I start to, I'm starting to smell my cast iron now. It smells really good, good and hot. I'm gonna see. Ah, uh, not as hot as I'd like it. So I'll wait another minute. But it's almost there. It's almost there. And we're back. So my skillet got nice and hot. Uh, I layered some in. Look, notice how I gave them a nice little bit of space between each one. I don't want to overcrowd my pan because if you overcrowd your pan, your shrimp will steam and I want a nice color on them. I want them to get a nice um, brownish, old bayish color. And again, um, these are 16, 16, 25 or 16 to 20, I believe, um, shrimp, which means they are jumbos. <clears throat> All right. And let's see if we're going to get a nice color. Uh, almost. That's the first one we put in, remember? All right. And the rest of them, I'll let them cook for another minute. And let's see how those turn out before I flip any more. 